a bunch of random things here. Got my sail panels out of the attic. Those look pretty good. I'm probably still gonna cover them in vinyl. I also dug out the rear seat side panels. These are pretty gross, but I'm gonna fix them. It's gonna take some body filler work and you know, the plastic is deteriorating in some places. And uh, you know, really like right here, it's completely missing that whole chunk. So I'm gonna have to figure out a way to get that done. This is one of the main reasons right here that I decided to wrap with vinyl, not only because I like the look of the actual vinyl wrap instead of spray painted plastic, but I had some defects that I was gonna be able to cover up. So this by far is the worst one. It was all sun fade, sun scald, the plastic was all uh, dry and cracking. So I went ahead and broke off all the dry stuff that I could. The rest of it's pretty flexible. And then I sanded to get all of the rough, loose stuff off the top. So what I'm gonna do now is pretty much just use some fiberglass matting and cloth and resin. And we're gonna go ahead and rebuild this. We're gonna use that side as a template. We got fiberglass cloth, which is kind of this woven material, a lot tighter weave than this mat, fiberglass mat. So this is just kind of stranded together. So the most popular video on my channel is one that I did comparing fiberglass cloth with fiberglass matting and also the different types of resins that you use. It does matter. Uh, there's an epoxy resin and there's a hybrid resin and what type of material you're working on will determine the best type of resin that you should use. So go back and check out that video if you want to learn more about it. But this is going to work just fine. We're going to alternate some matting and cloth just to make sure we have a really good structural repair. And to mix this up, it's pretty easy. The ratio's on the back. It's one ounce of the resin with 10 drops of the hardener. Fairly crudimentary here, but I just rebuilt this using a popsicle stick to kind of hold that end which had snapped off. You can see I have some epoxy there, but that stick's just kind of holding that together. And then where the end was eroded, you can see I just taped some cardboard in there so I can have a guide for rebuilding that edge. And then just a little bit of tape to keep the goop from slopping out. I'm gonna start on the inside here and get these pieces laid in so that I have a really solid base on the underneath before I start uh, putting some fiberglass cloth and mat on the top. Pretty cool. <clears throat> so that's hardened up pretty good. I'm just gonna go ahead and trim off some of these edges before I do the other side. I also found a little spot down here that had a crack that I'm gonna repair. So yeah, I'm just gonna flip this over now and go ahead and start building up this side. Looks like I got a little bit of a weird overlap here on that. So we'll go ahead and trim that off before we do, but it's coming along. beautiful day outside so I just got this out in the sun drying just wanted to show you where we ended up here before I start hacking on it with my little little die grinder disc there so I think this is gonna be pretty good pretty thick in spots but we can beat that down so we're gonna start shaping it
you go. Got it all sanded down with 80 grit. Took off all that dry, crusty, nasty stuff that was on the exterior. A little bit of body filler where I got kind of aggressive with my sander here. And then this was just to kind of fill in the fiberglass stuff. So this is ready to be glued and wrapped. Okay, so this is the Black Marine Grade Vinyl. Got it from a fabric store. I'm not gonna go too super in detail on this because you can always go back to my dash video or the center console video and I really show how this uh, black vinyl gets glued down. But doing these rear pieces, I learned a critical lesson from the other side. Uh, you wanna make sure that you have plenty of material all the way around because once you start sucking this down in, it's, you see how it pulls it tight over here? You don't want to end up coming up short, you know, getting all this glued down and finding out that you're short over here. So pretty much what I did was I started with some marks here. This is my ashtray, but the big thing is, is this dot matches this depression. And this line here matches this, and this one matches that. So if I get this correct, when I actually cinch the glue down here, I'm going to know that I've got plenty of material to go around when I start stretching things out. And I'm going to start here. Um, you want to make sure this point right here is anchored in really well. If it's not, when you do these pieces up here and here, this is going to lift and you're going to have a lot of problems trying to get that to suck and stick right there. So I'm gonna start with this, get this little piece locked in right here, and then I can peel everything back and start gluing it from there. Okay, so that's what we're gonna start with, just this piece right here. We're gonna let this glue tack up. This is what I'm using, this Weldwood contact cement. This is the original version. It really stinks. It's mineral based. So the vapors are pretty potent. That's why I got my little air circulation deal going on here, just to keep the air moving. So I don't pass out or catch one hell of a buzz. All righty, so this is all tacky. Looks like it's ready to, ready to go. Okay, now I'm just double checking. I got plenty, plenty of material where I need it. So we're gonna let that just kind of harden in a little bit. And while that's hardening in, I guess we'll go ahead and flip this and start letting this uh, other glue dry. But we're just gonna keep working this in sections. I'll work this section, flop this over, work that section, flop this over, work the top section. And at some point here, I'll cut off my extra material, but I'll bring you back, show you what we end up with. I was coming along here, just kind of got all this locked in last night. Same as in the other piece, I had to make a relief cut. There's just too much material to pull together there, so I have to make a cut. I want to look into some of that vinyl repair material. I think it comes in like a fingernail polish container or touch-up paint container where you can brush some stuff in there. But anyways, what I really wanted to show you here before I lock in all these sides and wrap all this around is if you're gonna get into this, these dollies work really good. Uh, I was putting them in socks for a while just to kind of keep some of these marring imprints from happening, but they do release. But you are gonna find that some places just don't want a cinch here. They just don't want to grip. And it takes a while. You got to work it in, work it in, work it in. A little bit of weight overnight. But what I really wanted to show you is this is a bag of like oil dry with water in it to make it nice and heavy. But it's also form fitting. You can smush this into the little concaves. So I smushed it down into here overnight. And you can see that's laying in. But I bet you, yep, see there's still a little bit. So I'm going to have to put some heat on there and do it again. But anyways, make you up a few of these if you are going to do this work. It'll help you out for sure.
There we go, pretty happy with that. Got her wiped down, so she's looking pretty shiny. You know, this back here is not really sticking down, but that's behind the seat, so I'm not gonna work that anymore. If I come back in a day or so and try to push that in, it, it'll stick a little better while that glue's setting up. But down here doesn't matter. That's under the seat where the seat belt, um, seat belt goes. So the only real issues are where I had to cut this relief here. You know, but camera's picking it up pretty good, but in real life, it kind of blends into those wrinkles, which I actually like those wrinkles. It gives it like a, a real feel, you know, real custom, I guess. Maybe it's just me justifying that it's not perfectly smooth, but um, I don't know. I like it. it. Gives it character. So we're going to get this installed, and then the next step is, you know, move on to the back seat. So we got that put in. There's a self-thread right there and another one back up behind there. I went ahead and put the seat back in. There's like three hooks on the backs of the car that hook into the frame. You get that slid down and then these little loops go into that bracket right there with a 7 16 and that just slides straight down and locks in. And then these bottoms, you just got these hooks right here. You got to put the seat buns down and slide them in until they lock. So got the seat belts up and out of the way. That way we can get the buns in. There's the bottoms all installed. Those don't bolt in, guys. They just slide in. There's a bracket underneath right in the middle here. And a bar from the seat underneath locks into that and slides. And that's about it. So... So yeah, those seats are looking really good there in the back. Like I said, I'm gonna have to figure out some way to fix the little seams where I had to make relief cuts, but I don't think that's gonna be too big of a deal. They got that vinyl repair stuff. So for what it is, I think it looks great. But we're moving right along, guys. There is a ton of parts that are going onto this car. As you can see, the glass is in, the front seats are in. There's videos on all that stuff. I've been moving so fast on this car that I can't keep up with the videos getting one out a week even. So you're gonna to wanna to stick around and check out all of this stuff that's going into the car. I'm waiting on a shipment of parts today. It's gonna to be my front kick panels. I've got door handles, door locks, windows, glass, everything. So we're pushing to cruise by early summer, late spring, and it's gonna be awesome. So you're gonna to wanna to stick around. If you made it this far, Hit the like button for me. I would really appreciate that. And if you're not subscribed, you know, consider doing that as well. So I started the last couple videos with a new kind of intro where I'm giving a flash of the work that's about to happen in the video. Let me know in the comments if you like that. If you do, I'm going to probably keep doing that. Just a little something different from my standard, you know, my name's Nate. This is Heavy Pedal Garage. I've been doing that for a while. So let me know if you think that's cool or if you got any other ideas for the videos. Just trying to mix it up a little bit. Hopefully keep it interesting. So, you know, catch me next time.